So today I'm gonna to be sharing with you the same study strategies that I loved using, whether it be in college, high school, medical school, and now still even as a full-time physician. And these are the same study strategies that I used to get a 4.0 in high school, a 3.8 in college, and a 3.9 in medical school. So let's get into it. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In case you're new here, my name is Laksh. I'm an internal medicine physician. Some people call me Dr. Thrivedi, but you can call me Laksh. And here in this channel, I try to help you succeed on whatever journey you're on, but doing it with less stress. And today we are gonna to try to help you make your studying less stressful. So, so while we are watching this video and you're like, man, those are some good tips. Like hit the like button, that's all I ask. Um, and add your comments down below. And after you watch this video, if you want more of our study tips, then definitely check out this video right here on how you can study from start to finish like a pro. And this is my favorite video that we have here on this channel of how you can use Anki like a pro. A lot of people like this one. So those will be linked down below, but watch this video and then go check out those two. And then finally, if you're interested, there are programs that we have for you at the MD Journey that I've created with all my favorite study strategies kind of broken down step by step. And so those will be linked down below in case you're interested, but let's get into it. So study technique number one that I swear by is to use a high yield resource first. Now lectures are amazing, but honestly, I get a little bored when I go to college class or medical school class because sometimes a lecture talks about what they think is important, but it isn't something that I really need, you know, a few years down the line as a physician or when you're in college or whatever it is to graduate. So it would just be nice if somebody could tell me like five minutes, like you're about to learn about high blood pressure. Here are the main things you need to take away instead of a, like a 60 minute or a 90 minute lecture. And they realized that most of the stuff was just like very fluffy and detail oriented. And I know a lot of you guys have this problem because you comment down below and saying, I don't know how to tell what's high yield and what's not. Like, what do I do? I go to class and I'm just like confused out of my mind. This is where high yield resources comes super handy. One, if you're trying to learn something super quickly, or two, if you want to also identify like what's high yield and what's not. A high yield resource and my personal favorites are things like videos. So let me just show you an example. One of my favorite resources that I love using and I recommend to a lot of medical students are things like Osmosis. So Osmosis is a free YouTube channel. Obviously they have a paid product as well, which I'll talk about in a future video but you can pick any topic that you want to learn about and there's like 800 videos on their YouTube channel whether it be congestive heart failure HIV bipolar and they're relatively quick six to 12 minutes here and then if you use my speed listening technique and I'll link that video down below to really help yourself listen to things faster you can watch these videos a few times and so my ideal structure is to listen to some kind of high yield resource I use this even as a doctor now like if it's been a while since I've taken care of somebody with for example schizophrenia I could watch this video really quickly whether it be an elevator and just kind of listen to it on 2x and now I have the basic knowledge of how to kind of manage and how to diagnose if I needed to different things about schizophrenia or things like HIV and they're like oh I forgot like the signs and how it's transmitted and a lot of those basic science things I could watch this video and then feel comfortable of like taking care of patients in an HIV clinic tomorrow things just come back nicely but if you're in school, whether it be in college or medical school or anything else, one of the great strategies is that you can look at the lectures for the next day and saying, okay, let me see if I can find two to three videos, five to 10 minutes each, and listen to them at 1.5 to two X, just to get an idea of what is supposed to be important. And you don't have to go crazy where you have to like take a bunch of notes. Honestly, all I'm trying to use the study technique for is to get an idea of what somebody considers to be important. So when I go to lecture the next day, or if I hear about it in a patient the next day, I'm like, ah, I've heard that before in the video and I hear it now, Ding, 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 like you need to remember that for the future. And as a bonus strategy, if I do find a video that's super effective and I was like, oh, I really want to understand the analogy they shared in there or the way they taught it just like stuck. Then what I'll do is I'll finish the video, not take notes, and then I'll take my notebook. And so this is the notebook that I use to track all my medical kind of knowledge and be easily be able to refer to in the future if I want to teach any medical students. And then basically see if I can create it from scratch. And, and if I know it, then perfect. But usually the first time around, I think I know something, but there's a bit of knowledge that I'm still kind of missing. So if the video is short and that's the benefit of it, I can watch it again now at 2x and listen specifically for that kind of misconnection that I didn't crash the first time and I'm already kind of feeling more comfortable with the material and again this is all before going to lecture so in your schedule if you can add an extra hour to where you're kind of doing not necessarily pre-reading but pre-learning so then you can go into lecture and truly feel like you're already kind of seeing the material this is one of my favorite ways to do it now technique number two I make a bunch of videos about this and those are using Anki flashcards now earlier in the video I mentioned that you guys definitely need to check out this video on how to use Anki like a pro even if you've used Anki before there are gonna be a lot of advanced techniques if you've never used Used it then definitely check this video out because it walks you step by step but Anki is basically a space repetition tool that uses flashcards whenever you're learning something let's just imagine you have 50 topics there may be some topics that you're going to be amazing at some topics not so great at, and some topics you're absolute garbage at ideally you would like to see more of the garbage topics more of the average topics and less of the things that you're good at and that's exactly what Anki does so you can make your own flashcards and the beauty of Anki is that you can make your own flashcards you can use other flashcards that people have made and the most important thing it's free 
And because I've made full blown out step-by-step -step tutorials here on the channel about how to use Anki, all of those will link down below in the tutorials. So make sure you definitely check that out. And if you're on the fence, you're like, nah, I'm not gonna check it out, then consider checking it out for just the purposes of learning my screenshot method, because that's the exact same technique that I use to go from 10 hours of studying in medical school to like five to six and still got even better grades. So if that encourages you guys to check out the video, that'll be linked down below. Now, technique number three that I love is the brain dump. Now, this is a technique I talked about on the channel. And before explaining exactly how it works, I think it's more important to explain kind of what it's for. A lot of times when we're studying for tests, we may be good at remembering little piece of details that you know you can answer a multiple choice question on. But if you have a second or third order question, that's like, how do these things relate when this is not working? That requires you to have a different level of understanding of the material and more kind of in depth of how things are connected. Usually our typical styles of flashcards, outlines, you know, writing things on whiteboards don't really work. And so the way the brain dump works is you can use a notebook or a blank scratch piece of paper like we did earlier and try to create a lecture from memory really quickly through scribbles on a piece of paper, again, from memory. The beauty of this activity is usually after you reviewed a lecture and after class, you can kind of remember the structure and the flow of what was talked about, but you will be able to quickly identify saying, I remember there's something here don't really actually remember the content. You can quickly put a star or highlight it and then try to do the rest of the lecture as much as you remember. Now, as you look at the paper, you'll be able to identify all the different stars you left and saying, oh, I should go back to the PowerPoint or go back to the lecture or go back to my high level resource and try to fill in these gaps. And then once you know you take the time to do that, you can go ahead and then try to recreate it again from scratch. And every time you do this, now you have a better full understanding of the entire lecture and not just one piece of information. And so one of my favorite ways of using the brain dump of this will be approach up is on the weekend, I kind of create a list of all the different things that really have tripped me up. And then I try to do a brain dump, whether it be on the whiteboard or on the scratch piece of paper. But if I can do those, or especially going into an exam, then I feel comfortable saying, okay, at least I know this topic enough to recreate the lecture from memory. I'll probably be okay for the actual thing. Now, technique number four that I absolutely love using is to use practice questions to really focus on my weak points. Now, throughout the week of learning anything, whether it be in medical school or college, maybe let's start identifying things like, ah, this area is like not my best. And so it'd be nice to have practice questions that could ideally be similar to the ones that would show up to exam or will force you to have that kind of well interconnected knowledge of the material to answer the questions correctly. And so in medical school, I would have get a question bank or an all-in-one resource. And I've made different videos on this, but if you guys are interested, just add the comments down below and I'd be happy to tell you if one resource is better than others. But having some source of practice questions, whether it's something that your school provides or something that you buy separately and then doing them on one set time, I'd prefer like doing them on a Saturday, like 1 p.m. and just doing it for a certain amount of time. So instead of saying I'm going to do 40 questions, I'm going to say I'm going to do 30 minutes of questions and I do as many as I can. And the beauty of this now I've had a week of doing high yield resources, doing flashcards, doing brain dumps, and I can come into one session and saying, well, truly, like Lex like pointed out, like, how well do you really know this knowledge? And if you think that as a physician, I don't do this anymore, absolutely not true, because I actually have to study for my licensing exams as an internal medicine physician. So as you guys can see, I do practice questions on my phones all the time, whether it be on work or a specific day on the weekend. And so again, this is my opportunity as a physician saying, oh, you write about something in cardiology. Let's see if you can answer questions about cards, because then I can look at those questions and saying, oh, you thought you knew this, but you answered all these questions incorrect about hypertension. You should go read back and do a brain dump and do more flashcards about blood pressure and watch more videos. So then you can answer these questions truly effectively the next time. But don't worry guys, I know how to take care of blood pressure, I think. And finally, the study technique that I probably swear by the most and definitely work a lot with my one-on-one -on -one students, so if you're interested, I'll be linked down below, is to create a checklist of your most difficult topics. Now, let me just show you kind of how this works step-by-step. -step. So I'm just gonna go ahead and show you my screen. So this is my Notion dashboard. And just to give you an example, I have kind of various different topics that I like to study. So for example, here's my cardiology notebook and Notion. And as I'm learning different things, I kind of add this to my Notion da dashboard, but you can do this for your own class you're learning. Um, but you would add the piece of knowledge that may be difficult. So I have like actual bits of information, but for you, it may just be cardiogenic shock, or let me just say, for example, troponins or how to do chest pain stratification. Um, but it may be a general topic and then you can categorize them. But the beauty of this is that and then when I come in the weekend, I can say, okay, let's sort these by difficulty. So maybe I can look at a piece of information of saying, oh, that's actually pretty difficult on a scale of one to five, or just making arbitrary numbers. And this is actually pretty easy. So now through Notion, I'm essentially sorting all the topics that I'm labeling five will move to the top. And so then when I'm coming on my weekend review sessions, I can choose to do these first before I do all my ones. 
And as the test is coming around, you know, ideally if I review this topic and we're like, oh, I don't actually remember how balloon pumps work. Let me just go watch a video on this and the high yield resources. And I'm able to link those in an extra column. Then once I feel comfortable, I'm saying, oh, that went from a five to a three. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit a checkbox next to it. And then you can go ahead and change your other fives to a threes. And that just helps move different things up. And if there's something that used to be hard or excuse me, if something that used to be easy, but now it's difficult because it's been a while, so you can move it up on the board. So that way, when you go to your weekend review, you have a different list of topics and different level of priorities. So as I'm going through my week, I'm like, ah, here's a bit of information that I learned about in the video or I learned about in class, but it's just like not sticking because I keep having to see the flashcards. I missed a question on a practice kind of cue bank on this. I just add this to a list. And as I go into a test, my main goal is to be able to check all of these off because if I can, that means I know all the material, both the easy and the hard topics I wasn't comfortable with. And I feel prepared for the exam. So you can do this however you want. When I was in college, I would create a Word doc and basically color code different things based off my comfort level. So if I thought it was really easy, I would make it a green. If it was really hard, I would make it kind of like a shaded red. If it was something that's like average, I would put an orange. And then every time I would come back to that Word doc, I would change the colors of things depending on how well I felt comfortable. The main goal was to try to make everything green to at least a little bit of orange, no reds. But those guys are some of my favorite study techniques that I swear by. I still use to this day as a physician, definitely. And they're definitely the techniques that I like to go to first or try to implement for a student whenever I'm working with a student one-on-one. -on -one. If you guys are interested in working with me or through our coaching programs, um, just go ahead and check out the link down below. Um, you can also see the reviews that past students have gotten. And if you want to improve your studying, but do it more in a DIY kind of style, I totally get it. Definitely check out some of their free resources like this video here of how to study from start to finish, as well as this video on how to use Anki. But you can also check out some of our programs down below, kind of help you expedite the process if you like this over the shoulder look of how to use certain study techniques but most importantly you really don't care of how i study you want to see how these study techniques could be used in your life then check out some of our programs like the level up your studying program rapid study accelerator or the domination bundle if you have any questions about which program may be the best for you definitely send me a dm on instagram or comment down below happy to help you and with that being said guys if you did enjoy this video all i really ask is one Consider using one of these study techniques and seeing how it works to ideally improve your setting and ideally time that it takes for you to learn something. If it worked out, go ahead and add the comments section down below as like a little mini review of if it worked or if it's like, ah, you suck, that actually didn't work at all. I'd love to hear your feedback. And two, consider hitting that like button because most importantly, it tells me I like videos like this. You should make more videos like that. And I'll listen if there's enough likes. But two, there may be somebody out there who's like, man, my studying is like not where I want it to be. I just need to have this magical video pop up of how to study better. Your like may make it more likely that YouTube shows it to them on their feed. So just do a favor, like hit it at once, maybe twice, like three or four times, just like smash and destroy it that it doesn't exist. If you're new to the channel or if you're just lurking around, you're like, eh, I'm not gonna hit that subscribe button. Consider doing so because there's more videos coming out like this on a weekly basis, more interesting content coming out and hit that ring and notification bell to know when new videos go out. But as always guys, I love you guys so much. Thank you for making it to the end of the video. Appreciate your support. Hopefully it was a little help to you guys on your journey. Thanks for being a part of mine. And again, if you did enjoy this video, two videos that you like, this video on how to study like a pro, start to finish, definitely watch that as well as this video on how to study using Anki like a pro full breakdown. But as always, thank you so much for watching the video. I'll see you guys in the next one, my friends. Peace.